muted. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. So the demonstration today, it is going to, it's going to give you an introduction to a course point for medical terminology. So for those of you that are not familiar with the program, what is course point? Well, course point, it's a comprehensive course solution. And it incorporates or bundles all of the uh, bulleted items that you see here on the screen. So it bundles an interactive ebook, and we'll have a chance in a little bit to look at that ebook, and you can see that it's not a static ebook; it really is interactive. Uh, it also bundles adaptive learning, adaptive quizzing, powered by PrepU. Some of you guys might be familiar with PrepU; you might even be using it. Again, we'll demo that in just a few moments. It also bundles and gives students access to Stedman's online medical dictionary. Uh, you're provided with real-time data and analytics on student and class performance. Uh, students will have instant remediation, and uh, we also provide personalized support and training, uh, which can help you successfully implement the program into your course. Now, Course Point, it's available for Barbara Cohen's medical terminology and illustrated approach, with it, which is now in its eighth edition. So for those of you that may not be familiar with the book, I want to take just a minute to uh, introduce you to the textbook. And then again, we'll jump into the program. Uh, while I'm kind of introducing you to the textbook, I'm curious, uh, for those of you that are here today, um, how many of you guys are familiar with this textbook? Have you seen it? Maybe some of you are using it. Um, or if you're not familiar, that's OK. Just let me know that you're not familiar or using the book. Uh, but sometimes that's helpful for me to know uh, the background and you know if you guys are familiar with the textbook or not. So go ahead and type that in as I'm starting to walk through um, an intro for you. So the book, it's uh, written by Barbara Cohen. Uh, she also writes our best-selling anatomy and physiology books. Uh, now this book is uh, a traditional midterm book. It has balanced coverage of anatomy and physiology and medical terminology. So the book, it's, um, it's really about student retention. You know, it's really hard to keep all of the students that you start with at the beginning of the semester. Um, and if you're teaching anatomy and physiology and medical terminology, it really just makes sense to use the Cohen books. Um, it provides uh, students with a consistent writing style. And the design and ancillary package are both written specifically for students studying to be a health professional. So this really just helps to make your students feel comfortable. Um, and you'll find that you don't have to repeat yourself quite as much, which is always a bonus. So uh, some of the key features or resources, you'll see a couple listed here on the slide. Um, but we provide a lot of really interactive and a, and, um, a lot of really interactive uh, resources for, uh, for your students. So um, <clears throat> excuse me, it includes uh, PrepU, which is featured in the ancillaries at a glance section. We'll look at PrepU in a little bit. There are lesson plans that are updated with tips on, uh, for instance, how to use the book in, let's say, a flipped classroom or maybe an online learning environment um, so that it will help make the text easier uh, for you to use and integrate and teach from. There's also a wide range of interactive learning activities. Uh, we'll see some of these in a little bit, but it includes things like uh, flashcards and word building. There's things uh, students can click where they can kind of listen and label, look and label, pronounce it, spell it. So it's all these interactive kind of uh, activities. There's also games. You know, students love games. We kind of have this generation of students that are all gaming. So we have things like quiz shows and crossword puzzles, hangmen. Um, just to help students study and review. And we have heard from students. We do reach out and talk to students. And we hear from them that they really love these types of activities. Um, you know, students these days, they really live in an online environment. And so our goal is to try to meet them there and provide them with really engaging and interactive uh, learning resources. So let me open up that chat box. Uh, some of you guys were uh, providing um, uh, some 
some comments about uh, the textbook. It looks like some of you guys are familiar, uh, some are not. And uh, Emily, it looks like you're considering changing text. So uh, for anyone that's interested in uh, learning more about the text, uh, feel free to let us know that. We can definitely get you a review copy of the book if you want to take a look for it. So at any time, just before you log out today, to let us know that, and we can provide you with some additional, uh, with some additional information. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's continue on. So this time we're going to jump over to uh, the live program. Um, I've had this open for a little bit, so let me take a moment and just refresh my screen. So right now I'm already logged into the point. Uh, this is simply our uh, educational platform. It's where uh, all of our content lives. So to access the program, you would simply log in here. Uh, you and your students would be given an access code. And after logging into the point, you would enter that code just one time. And then this program would be listed under this tab that says My Content. So it's pretty easy to access. And then under this green bar, you'll see some tabs. And this is how we'll navigate through the program today. So we're going to start in the Course Content tab. And right now, we're logged in as an instructor. So this would be your view. And um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the comments. It looks like a few of you guys are communicating. Maybe you know each other. Uh, that's great. Um, all right, so right now we're logged in as an instructor. This is the course content tab. And the key point to know here is that this is where you as an instructor, you'll access um, all of the content that you have available to you. So it's simply a menu of tools. So I'm not going to click on all of these, but I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see. Under Knowledge Acquisition, there's an image bank and flashcards, uh, user guides, which are nice for students. There's the ebook, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, there is an audio glossary. This is especially useful for those uh, students where English might be their second language. Uh, there's some lesson planning resources. And then on the right-hand side, there's some lesson planning resources. So only you as an instructor can see these. Uh, on the student side, they would not see these resources. So you have lesson planning uh, guides, you have uh, user guides, quick start guides, lesson plans, PowerPoints, image banks, and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this link for the Vital Source bookshelf. Uh, so I want to show you the ebook and some of the features and functionality that are available to you. So uh, all of our content is provided through Vital Source. It's simply a widely used ebook platform for education. And from here, students can actually access all of their ebooks and search across all of the content uh, within their library. Uh, let me jump back briefly to uh, the PowerPoints uh, before we jump into the ebook. So we do know that students need mobile and sometimes offline access to their learning resources. And for that reason, all of the course point digital textbooks, they can be downloaded to the Vital Source bookshelf. Uh, now listen here, because this is really um, a unique feature and something that we get really great feedback uh, about. So once you download, uh, you and your students can actually download uh, the book on up to four devices. So a student could download it on their phone, maybe a tablet, a laptop, a computer, but you can download it on up to four devices. And once it's downloaded, students will actually have perpetual access to the ebook. So even after the course point subscription expires, you'll still have access to the ebook. Uh, so that's a really unique feature. Um, you know, it's something that um, you know students and faculty alike uh, really appreciate. Um, additionally, there is a read allow feature that is available when the book is downloaded, and uh, students really love that feature. You know, we're just in this generation of students where a lot of students just don't like to read. We hear from faculty all the time um, that one of your frustrations, uh, one of your pain points is that students just aren't reading the textbooks. and so. We provide this read aloud feature where the click of a button, uh, once the book is downloaded, uh, students can have the book read to them. And again, that's a feature that students really seem to appreciate. So let's go back. Um, let's go ahead and click on the textbook. Let me show you some of the functionality of the book. I mentioned a little while ago that this is not a static ebook. It is very uh, interactive. So I'm not even sure where I am in the book. It looks like I'm in Chapter 12 looking at the the uh, digestive system. Um, it starts out with a pretest, uh, learning objectives. 
Uh, you'll see here I already made some highlights, but uh, you do have the ability to highlight within the textbook. I'll choose a different color this time. And one of the other things that you can do, notice here there's this little sticky note. So you can add a note. Um, let's say there's something important here and you want your students to know that uh, this will be on the test. If I can spell correctly, this will be on the test. There you go. And you can save that. So now this note will pop up in the margin. And what's really nice is that you can have your students subscribe to your notes. So what that means is they can come over here and they can click this sharing button and they can subscribe to your notes. And by doing that, um, as they're going through their book and reading it on the Vital Source bookshelf, they'll be able to see your highlights and they'll be able to see your notes. So it just provides you an added way, some added capability to be able to communicate with your students. It's a really nice feature there. A really uh, nice feature that I want to take a little bit of time to show you um, is the ancillary resources. So you'll see here all of these uh, boxes here. All of the textbook ancillary resources are mapped to specific textbook pages and then it's integrated in the ebook at the exact place where the students would need those interactive types of activities. So uh, these are some of the types these are some of the features that students really love. So rather than just reading, which we know students don't like to do, uh, they can click. So we can take a look here at a web figure, let's say, or let's scroll down. Uh, it looks like there's some animations here. It may take just a minute to load. Uh, let me actually click it, turn my sound up and see what's here. Biologic catalysts. They speed the rate of chemical reactions to allow for effective all right, I'm not going to play much more than that, but just to show you a sample. Uh, there are also, uh, here's the audio glossary, and then there's some learning activities. These are some of, you know, kind of the games that students really like. So under concentration, um, under the digestive system. So it looks like we have to match the term and the definition. Um, I'll just randomly select. I usually get these wrong anyway, so I'll just show you. Then you can click show answer and it should provide uh, the feedback. So I got it wrong and then it tells you what the correct answer is. You can reset and start again. Uh, we have look and label, which is just what it sounds like. You'll see an image and you have to label it. So again, when we find number one, we need to label and match, uh, match the right definition. Let's see, what else do we have here? There is something called pronounce it. We turn the speakers up, see if we can hear this in a moment. Oh, there we go. Jejunum. And uh, then you can flip the card and keep going. There are activities like sound it out, spell it. So spell it, I believe it, um, you click on the uh, speaker here, it sounds out a term and then you have to spell it. Achalasia. Achalasia. And then you would take, take a stab at spelling that. So again, just a sample of some of these um, interactive activities. Uh, students really love these activities, so I just wanted to take time to show you that. All right, so one of the other features that's included in with Course Point is Stedman's Online. You can click this link right here. Um, <coughs> And it looks like it's taken just a moment to pop up. So uh, users will have access to Stedman's via this link. And Stedman's online, it defines uh, around, I think it's about 56,000 terms. And once you're in the program, you can search for the definition of a term. You can hear it pronounced, uh, see it illustrated, and also watch it in motion. So let's go ahead. I will search for um, asthma, because that's easy to spell. And uh, once we bring that up, let's find the correct term. I'll turn my speakers up again. You can hear it pronounced. Asthma. And you can uh, see it illustrated and sometimes also watch it in motion. Now, Stedman's used to be an additional purchase. It wasn't always bundled into Course Point. It used to be an additional $50 purchase where midterm students would buy a midterm book plus they would buy a medical dictionary and um, you know that gets quite expensive. So now Course Point bundles them together, which is really nice. 
All right, so what we're going to do next, up till now you've been seeing this from an instructor viewpoint, we're going to click over, take a look at this from a student viewpoint, and we'll try to mimic some of the things that students would do within CoursePoint. All right, so now we're in as a student. It looks pretty similar so far. Uh, the only difference is on the right-hand side, we don't have those instructor resources um, anymore because students can't uh, see those. So what would a student typically do in the program? Usually they would start by taking a quiz. So we're now going to click over to, to this tab. It says Adaptive Learning by Prep U. Oh, sorry about that. I just got a new computer, so sometimes I have to click a, a button there. All right, so let's click back to that Adaptive Learning tab. And typically what students do first is they take a quiz. Um, I'll explain a little bit about PrepU in a moment if you're not familiar with it, but let's go ahead and take a sample quiz, and then I'll give you some background on PrepU. So students would come in, they have the ability to select a chapter or multiple chapters. We'll just select chapter one, and then we can select how many questions we want to quiz through. So for the sake of the demo, we'll just do a short quiz, five questions. It's going to build my quiz and then I'll go ahead and take my quiz. So uh, which of the following statements is true about medical uh, dictionaries? And then we have to answer the question. Uh, you have to go through the entire quiz before you get feedback. So I'm just going to randomly click some answers, and then I'll show you what happens next. Now it's going to analyze my results and provide me with some feedback. So it looks like out of five questions, I only got one correct. So now the system is going to guide me on what to do next as a student, and I might want to take another quiz considering I didn't do too well in this one, or I can look at my overall performance. We'll come back to this data in a moment. What I really want to show you first is the answer key. So what CoursePoint does, um, you know, PrepU, it's an adaptive learning tool. So once we finish, we get an answer key, and we can see question by question what we got right and wrong. Uh, we also see a, a short explanation. So here, question number two, we got incorrect. I can uh, take a look at this explanation. And then notice these little green boxes. We call these smart sense links. Uh, these links is actually, you know, this is kind of the power of course point. It provides remediation. So right at the point where I'm getting something incorrect, right at the point where I'm not understanding, you know, the concept or the topic at hand, I can click this link. And it will take me right to the place within my textbook where I can remediate and learn more. This really is the power of CoursePoint. This really is how CoursePoint was developed. So we have this program called Prep, excuse me, let me try that again. We have this program called Prep U, which is the online um, adaptive quizzing. It's this tab. It's a component of CoursePoint. We've actually had this available for the Cohen textbook for about five years, just the Prep U component. And um, students that, that are using it, what they would tell us is that they would take these quizzes, and then when they didn't get something right, um, they would actually flip over to their print book, they would crack it open, and they would read that section of the book. Uh, Prep U itself, if you buy that individually, it doesn't, it's not linked uh, to an ebook like CoursePoint is. And so you would get an answer key, but you wouldn't have these remediation links. And so students, again, they will go over to their print book, crack it open, and read that section. And so with CoursePoint, we've bundled the ebook and some other resources to try to make it much more effective and efficient for students. And, you know, we get some really great feedback. Students that are using this, you know, one of the things that they like the most is these uh, remediation, these smart sense links. Now, before we go any further, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that everybody understands fully um, a little bit about Prep U. So let's go back to the PowerPoints. Um, as I'm walking through this, um, if you guys could open up that chat box, I'm curious um, how many of you guys are familiar with Prep U? Uh, maybe some of you are using it. Maybe you've seen a demo on it. Um, or let me know if you're not familiar with Prep U, because that will help me kind of adapt the presentation from here. Um, you know, knowing if you're familiar or not um, with PrepU. So again, just open up that chat box real quickly. Let me know what you think, or I'm sorry, not what you think, but your familiarity um, or not with PrepU. All right, so it looks like we're kind of all over the board. Uh, so far, most of you are not familiar, uh, but some of you are. Some of you have seen a demo. 
Okay, well, it looks like a few of you are familiar, but most of you are not. So let me just go ahead and talk about PrepU. I'll just um, give you a basic understanding of what it is. Uh, that way we're all on the same page, and then we'll continue to go through the, uh, the presentation. So uh, what is PrepU? Well, it's um, course point is powered by our adaptive learning system, which is called PrepU. And what this means is students have the ability to go in and take quizzes, quizzes that are going to tailor to their level of understanding. And then the program is going to create subsequent quizzes based on how the student performed. And uh, the benefit is students can practice at their own pace, um, but in a way that's really effective for them. So uh, students can take these quizzes as many times as they need to improve their learning. And the program, and you'll see this in just a moment, but it, it incorporates mastery levels. They go from one to eight. One is kind of where you start, so it's the foundational, the, you know, the, the, the base, you know, it's where everybody starts. And as you answer more and more questions correctly, your mastery will go from one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on. And that's showing that you're learning. So again, what you want to see over time is that a student's mastery level continues to improve. Now the quizzes truly are adaptive. So um, in the example of the quiz that I just took, uh, where I bombed, I only got one question right out of five, um, what's going to happen if I take another quiz? Uh, course point is going to give me a, a new set of questions. Um, however, those questions will be at the same difficulty level because clearly I haven't mastered the concepts yet. Uh, so I'll continue to get new questions at that same difficulty level. Um, however, once I start getting the questions right, or if I would have taken the quiz and gotten the questions correct, um, again, the system will give me a new set of questions, but they'll immediately be more difficult um, to continue to further my learning. Now, um, the difficulty level of all the questions in PrepU, they've been calibrated by students. Uh, this is really important to understand because it's one of the things that differentiates our program from other programs out there. So all of the questions within the program, they've actually been answered a minimum of 25 times by students, actual students who are taking this course, um, in order to calibrate the difficulty level. So we don't have subject matter experts come in and rate the difficulty level because then really it would be skewed. Uh, we want students to be rating the difficulty level. Um, and again, that really makes our adaptive quizzing um, system powerful and really unique and different from other programs. Um, adaptive learning really is ideal for medical terminology. Um, all right, so hopefully that gives you a good understanding of PrepU. Let's go back to the program. Uh, so, so far what we've done as a student is we've taken a quiz. Uh, typically, after students take a quiz, what they can do is they can click this button that says, how am I doing? And at any time, a student can click here, and they can see uh, their overall performance data. So this first chart on the left-hand side, um, it's charting uh, my progress as a student. I'm the orange line. And it compares me to the class, and the class is the gray line. So you see we all started at a mastery level of one. And as we're answering more and more questions on that uh, horizontal bar, uh, goes from 500 up to 1,000 and so on, what you want to see is that your mastery level is improving. And in this case, it looks like as a student, my mastery is improving um, at a higher rate than the overall class. So clearly I'm doing quite well as compared to my classmates. And then on the right-hand side, uh, this is really important, um, it will point out a student's specific strengths and weaknesses. So here it looks like I am strong on chapters 1, 2, and 16 and weak on a couple other chapters. Um, and, um, you know, the benefit of this, you know, again, you can see where you're doing well and where you're not. Uh, let's say it's time to study for an exam or a midterm. Um, you know, why spend time studying on areas where you're doing well? Instead, I can come in here, I can click and take a practice quiz on these weak topic areas. I do see there's a question. I'll answer that in just a moment. Uh, next, I can see my performance by chapter. So each chapter, it shows me with this orange bar. The orange bar, remember, is the student. It shows me my mastery level, but it also compares it to the class, which is the gray bar. And uh, we hear from a lot of faculty that students actually get quite competitive with this kind of an environment where you can compare yourself to the class. So, um, you know, you can certainly encourage your students to quote unquote beat the class and, excuse me, that will encourage them to come in and continue to quiz. 
I see there's a question. It's a bit of a techie question, though, but uh, somebody wants to know if they can integrate this to uh, Canvas, which I'm assuming is your, your learning management system. Um, I am not on the technical side, Brian, but I do know that there are ways to um, integrate CoursePoint. Um, I don't want to give you incorrect information, though, about exactly how it can or maybe cannot integrate. So I think I will simply uh, later on pass your question on to your local account rep, and they can get in touch with you and let you know exactly how this would work with your specific learning management system. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Um, at this point, as a student, we've taken a quiz. Uh, we've looked at our data. You know, how am I doing? So now what I want to do is I want to switch back, and we're going to go back to see uh, the instructor viewpoint. And I want to show you some of the functionality for you as an instructor. So we're going to click into this demo class. It's just kind of a fake class that we have set up so you can actually see something. Now, similar to the student's view where they could see how they're performing, you have this button that you can click and it says, how's my class doing? And basically, it gives you a bird's eye view on how your class is performing, either at a class level or at an individual student level. You can see you know, how much time your class has spent in course point. Um, you can see where your class and where individual students are struggling, where they're doing well. Um, you know, and, and it's really you know, this kind of data, having data and analytics available to you at any point throughout your course. It's, it, you know, it gives you power. It gives you, you know, a way to help address at-risk students, you know, while you still have time to make corrections and help those students. It also helps you to adapt your teaching time according to your class's performance. So let's take a look at some of this data. We'll start here at class performance. Let me move my screen down a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, so this first chart uh, just, again, shows you how your class is performing. So it looks like they went from a mastery of one to, oh, about five and a half pretty quickly. And then they kind of steadied out, but they're still gradually increasing their mastery level, so that's good. On the right-hand side, this histogram chart, it looks like your class, on average, is at a mastery of 6.2. Um, I particularly like this chart because you can visually, at a glance, see where the outliers are within your course. Uh, most students are between a 6 and 7, but you have one falling slightly behind at a 5, but then one way down here to 2. This would be an at-risk student. Um, and I can quickly identify that student. I can show you in just a minute you know, how to figure out who that student is, and then you can spend some time uh, working with that student to help them. Under strengths and weaknesses, this is looking at your class as a whole. So if your class is doing really well in chapters 1, 2, and 3, then instead you might want to spend some more teaching time on the weak areas, which is chapter 4, 5, and 16. Um, overall usage is just what it says. It's showing you usage of the program within your course. So it looks like out of 12 students, um, they've all taken quizzes. It tells you how many quizzes and so on. And then this chart on the right-hand side just shows you uh, usage over time. And uh, most instructors tell us that there's, you know, a peak usage kind of around the time that they push out assignments um, or, you know, right before um, exams. Um, misconceptions, this simply points out um, answers, or I'm sorry, it points out questions where the majority of your students select it. Uh, the same wrong answer. So it's just, you know, maybe there's something tricky with the way that it's worded, or there's something that your students are simply misunderstanding. Um, assignment results, uh, I'll show you in just a minute how to push out an assignment, but once you do that, you can see the results here. Now, up until now, all of the data that you've seen is for your entire class. Uh, you do also have the ability to look at each individual student, which is really important to be able to do. So here you have a student roster, so to speak, and uh, you can see the name of your students and how many times. So Florence here, this top row, she's logged in 184 times. She's taken 39 quizzes, answered 384 questions, and here is her mastery level. Uh, you can resort this by any of these column headings. And then you also have the ability to click into each of these students. So earlier when we, when we pointed out that one of the students was way down at a 2, this is how you can quickly identify which student that is. And then let's just pretend it's Florence. It's not, but we'll pretend. Uh, then you can click on 
her link takes you over to her side where you can see what she sees on her side, which is her overall performance. So this is really nice. Um, you know, if a student is struggling and you're going to be meeting with them or trying to give them some guidance, you can quickly see uh, how they're doing. You can see where their weak topic areas are. And, you know, instead of spending 30 minutes lecturing the student on better study habits or applying themselves more or reading more, you can simply say to them, look, you know, here's your weak topic areas. Go spend, you know, 30 or 40 minutes quizzing through prep you on those weak topic areas. Then come back to me and let's talk about how you're doing. So, you know, it helps to give very clear direction to your students, uh, but it also saves you quite a bit of time. Um, all right, so let me show you how to assign a quiz. Um, up until now, I've shown you as a student how they can go in and quiz on their own, and they can quiz on their own um, as often as they would like, whenever they would like. Uh, but you also have the ability to push out assignments. So there's two different ways to assign a quiz to your students. And uh, we have plenty of time, so we'll go through both of these. Uh, the first way is to... Um, Oops, and I see there is a question. Let me look at that quickly. Uh, Emily says, does the textbook come with an access code to prep you? So if you're just purchasing the textbook um, as a standalone textbook, then the answer is no. Uh, prep you is a separate purchase. So um, if you're for for those folks that are using prep U, they purchase prep U and then they get an access code once they purchase the program. Um, if you're purchasing course point, then what you're buying is the ebook bundled with prep U and some of the other resources that I've shown you today. Um, and again, if you would purchase course point, you would be given an access code, you would go to the point and then you could access the material. And then Julie has a question about price. Uh, what's the difference in the cost? Great question. Uh, we'll talk about pricing and we'll actually, well, I'll just address it since you're asking the question now. So um, I'm actually not a sales rep and so I'm, I'm not really authorized to discuss pricing. Um, so I'm not going to push pricing out to you. But what I can say is if any of you have questions about pricing, if you want to learn more about the cost of the program or the difference in the cost, um, you know, between Prep U, let's say, or Course Point, just let me know, and um, we'll email you and just connect you via email to your local account rep. Um, you know, any of you could certainly Google what the pricing is, and you can take a look at that. But um, what I can say about pricing is it really is dependent upon several factors. And if your institution is using, um, you know, other Walter Kluwer programs or if you're using CoursePoint already somewhere within your institution, sometimes there are discounts available to you. So uh, it's really best to have your rep look into that and provide you with pricing information. So again, just let me know that and we can get that information out to you offline later on. Um, good questions, though, everyone. Um, all right, so let's go back to assigning a quiz. There's two ways to assign a quiz. The first is mastery level. Um, it's very easy to assign quizzes. Uh, all you have to do is fill out a couple, couple fields. We'll name this. Uh, we'll just put the date. I can't believe it's December 7th. You would choose a chapter that you want to quiz your students through. Let's say we're studying Chapter 7. And now you're going to select a target mastery level. Now remember, this is adaptive. So what you're saying here, let's just hit uh, four. What you're saying here is that students have quiz and continue to quiz until they hit that mastery level. So with this type of an assignment, the mastery level assignment, it's adaptive. Um, so we're going to click Save and Continue. We'll assign it to our class. You can create a point value and set a deadline. And that's it. So now this is a live assignment. Now remember, we created this quiz for chapter, what do we say, chapter seven at a mastery level of four. Now this quiz, it's going to look different for every student um, because it's adaptive. So what that means is, uh, let's say I'm a good student. I'm studying. I'm uh, you know, going through prep U. Um, I'm doing really well in class. So for me to get to a mastery level of four might be quite easy because I understand the concepts. So as I'm quizzing, I'm going from a mastery of one to two, two to three, three to four, pretty quickly because I'm getting all of the answers correct. So my quiz might only, you know, take 25 to 30 questions, let's say. 
But for someone else who is not understanding the concepts, they're getting the questions incorrect, it might take them a little bit longer to, to hit that mastery of four because they're getting the answers incorrect, they're pausing, clicking those remediation links, and then going back and re-quizzing. So they might have to answer, um, I don't know, 75 to 80 questions, let's say, to get to a mastery level of four. So again, it's truly adaptive. So when you're assigning a quiz using the mastery level, it's going to look different for each of your students. Uh, the second way to assign a quiz, let's say you don't want a mastery level. Let's say you want to push out a traditional quiz where every student sees the same 10 questions. You can do that. So we actually give you access to the full question library, which is all the questions in prep you along with the test bank questions. Uh, and you can uh, search this question library to find the questions that you want to assign to your students. So you can filter it by chapters. Let's say we're studying, I don't know, part one. Then you might want to do a keyword search to narrow it down a little bit more, or you can search by Bloom's taxonomy, let's say, or by question type. Uh, but I think you get a feel here for how you would narrow down this question bank. You can also sort it by difficulty level. And if you're not seeing exactly what you want, you can click this button here, kind of on the upper right-hand side. It's orange. It says, add your own question. By clicking there, it gives you a bunch of fields you can fill out and create your own question. Uh, but basically, all you have to do on the left-hand side, let me scroll down a little bit, it says question collection. You just add a folder, and uh, we'll just name it December 7th. And it's just giving you the ability to basically select questions. You just drag and drop them into that folder. And by doing so, you're creating a collection of questions. Um, and then you can turn that into a quiz. So I'm just going to grab five questions. And now we'll go back to the top. We'll click Assign a Quiz. And we'll use the question collection. So again, this is a way to assign more of a traditional type quiz where every student sees the exact same questions. It's not adaptive anymore. You can click Preview, Save and Continue. And then again, uh, just with a couple clicks, you can assign it. So you select the right class. You can create a point value. You can set a deadline. Um, and here, you can also set a time limit. Because it's not adaptive, uh, every student sees the same questions. In this case, it's five questions, so we might want to, I don't know, we'll give them 15 minutes. We'll be generous. And then you let them know when or if they can see the answer key. And, and that's it. That's how easy it is to push out quizzes. And then on the student side, um, I will show you where they can find their quizzes. Uh, let's go back to the Prep View tab. So there's a button that says Assignments, and uh, that's where the assignments are listed. So that quiz that we just set up for December 7th, uh, you can see here that it's allowing me to take that assignment. It's highlighted in red, which means it's still active. So a student would just click here, see the assignments that they need to take, click it, and then they can uh, go through their assignment. Um, all right, so I think at this point um, I've um, I've been able to show you the program kind of in a nutshell. Uh, so just to kind of highlight what we've done up until this point as a student, I've shown you how they can go in and take practice quizzes on their own. And then we can look at how we're doing to uh, kind of compare our performance to the class. We can see our particular strengths and weaknesses. We can click on assignments to take assignments that you as an instructor have pushed out for us. And uh, there usually is a point value assigned to that. And then you as an instructor have the ability to create quizzes. You can create adaptive quizzes, or you can push out a traditional quiz to your students by assigning a quiz using uh, a question library or the adaptive component. And uh, you can also uh, take a look at all of the data and analytics available to you. So. Um, you know, at this point, some of you might be thinking, well, gosh, you know, this all sounds great, but um, don't you know that I'm really busy? How am I ever going to learn this or figure out how to incorporate this in my course? Well, we do have that covered for you. So to help ensure your success, we have a customer success team. And these folks, uh, you would actually be assigned with a personal training coach. So it would be a person that would help you to personally coordinate the pace of your instruction. Uh, they can help you to integrate the program. We have some great tech support uh, if you have any of those kinds of needs. 
Uh, so I do want you to know that um, you know we understand that it's not enough to create a great uh, program. Uh, we do also have to provide um, great support to you. So we do have that available to you in the way of our customer success team. All right, so at this point, um, I have shown you the program, as much of it as we've been able to in the time that we've had today. So at this time, I'd love to open it up to additional questions. Um, some of you guys have had some great questions along the way. Um, but um, most of you have been pretty quiet, so um, I'd love to hear any questions that you have at this time, or um, also, also I'd love to hear any feedback that you might have at this time. So let me know what you think. Um, but most importantly, before you log out, let me know how we can best follow up with each one of you. So again, um, you know, if you're interested based on what you've seen, uh, there's a couple good next steps. So if you're interested in pricing, let me know, and we'll simply email that to you offline. Um, maybe you want some of your other instructors to see the program, and if that's the case, a good next step is to um, have your local account rep just set up a personalized demo. It would be similar to what we did today, uh, but uh, it would be more personalized for you, and it would just include your institution. And um, I do see some questions. I'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, and we can also provide some uh, trial access if that that would be useful for you. So again, uh, before you log out, let me know how we can follow up with you. And if you don't need follow-up, that's OK. Let us know that, too. That way, we don't continue to um, bug you guys. Um, all right, so let me look at some of your questions. Brian wants to know, does the course come with samples, syllabus, and lesson plans? Uh, yeah, let me go back to the program. Uh, let me click back over to the course content tab. Let me see, am I logged in? Yes, I'm logged in as an instructor. Let me scroll down. So there are some lesson planning resources here available to you on the right-hand side. So there's lesson plans, um, syllabus conversion guides, PowerPoints, image banks, and so on. Oh, and somebody is look or asking, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody wants to look at a lesson plan. So sure, I don't know that I've actually ever clicked there, but I'm happy to click on a lesson plan for you. So it looks like it's uh, organized by chapter. Oh, and it looks like I have to download it. Okay, well this is something new. I haven't looked at this before. Uh, so here is a sample a lesson plan for you. It looks like we have a lesson plan for chapter one. It provides you with some learning objectives, what you'll need, uh, some key terms, and, and so on. So hopefully that was helpful for you to be able to see. Uh, it looks like some of you are interested in pricing or some follow-up, so we're happy to do that. Um, and Michael, you're interested in a review copy that I can access to review its rel relevancy to the course. So Michael, when you're asking for a review copy, are you asking for a review a review copy of the textbook, or are you interested in reviewing course point? I'm assuming you're interested in reviewing course point, but if you could just clarify that for me, that way we can get you the right information. Um, Adam, you're asking who your sales rep is. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know, but I will look that up uh, later on, and I can certainly email you and put you in touch via email with your sales rep. So I'll get back in touch with you, Adam, about that. And for those of you asking for follow-up, we'll definitely get that out to you. Uh, we can also, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the Cohen textbook, uh, we'd be happy to get you a review copy of the textbook. That might also be a good first step in um, you know, reviewing the program. Uh, Jamie, you have a great question. Does the program work best with a particular browser, Google Chrome, Firefox? Um, I would have to check with our customer success team, with our uh, tech folks. Um, I will say personally, um, I have not had great luck with Chrome. Um, actually, Course Point seems to work OK in Chrome. When I use some of the other programs, like virtual simulations, it doesn't work as well. I almost always demo this from Internet Explorer, and it works quite well. 
I've had some faculty on my webinars in the past that have told me that Firefox also works quite well with uh, using resources from the point. So that's just my own personal experience, um, but I am not tech support, so uh, I would have to get that official answer from tech support. All right, you guys have some great questions, and thanks for everyone who is letting me know how we can follow up with you. So for those of you that are asking for follow-up, like a review copy or a free access or information on PrepU, anything you know, pricing, what's going to happen next is uh, you'll receive an email, most likely uh, tomorrow or even later tonight. Uh, the email will come from myself. And all I'm going to do is uh, basically thank you for your participation today. And I'm going to copy, I'll CC whoever your local account rep is. So I'll look up who your account rep is, copy that person. Uh, that way you guys are connected via email, and I'll be letting your rep know uh, your specific request. So Linda, for example, I'll let your rep know that you want a review copy of the book um, and more information on course point and prep you. That'll cue your rep to then email you back and provide you with everything that you've asked for. So be looking out for that email again later tonight or uh, most likely sometime tomorrow. Well, I do still have a few more moments, so uh, feel free again to share with me any of your thoughts, comments, questions. Um, I would also love just any general uh, feedback that you have about the webinar today itself. Uh, my goal is always to improve these webinars. Uh, they're meant for you guys. So let me know what you thought. Um, you know, did I explain the program in a way that was understandable? Uh, did I speak at a good pace? Um, did I answer your questions thoroughly? Or is there something else you were expecting or would have liked to have seen? So feel free to let me know so that we can continue to improve um, on these in the future for you guys. And I'm happy to stay on the line for a few more minutes. Uh, we do have a few more minutes, so if there's anything you want me to go back and take a look at, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but again, most importantly, before you log out, just let me know how we can follow up with you. Or again, if you don't want follow up, that's OK, too. Just let me know. Um, and I do want to be respectful of your time, so I'll give you another, you know, maybe two or three minutes to finish typing in your last minute comments or questions, and then um, we will log out for the day. I do appreciate everyone being here, taking, you know, about an hour out of your time. I know you guys are all very busy, so I do appreciate you being here.